yeah, today I'd like to um, talk about the uh, Ugalima intrusive complex that's held by Rife Resources and our um, prospectivity and interpretation of this particular um, alkaline intrusive complex as a potential carbonatite and uh, possibly South Australia's next critical minerals project. Now, it's a fairly ambitious um, statement there. I'm just going to see if the pointer works. Is the pointer working? Okay, so uh, on a map here with Geoscience Australia, you can see the prospect has, has been noted here, the Caddy or the Cadney prospect, it, it's the same occurrence for, for reference there. So where did this all start? Um, back in 2015, Mike Schwartz, um, co-director of Rifle Resources with myself, uh, did a copper prospectivity study for Cadelco, looking at uh, any opportunities that could possibly be uh, present in, in, in the Gawler Craton as well as the Kernamona and the Arunta. So we embarked on a, a mineral systems model uh, on the back of the work done by Roger Skiro and one component of that was looking at mappable um, GIS based uh, criteria that fit with the characteristics of the, an IOCG min mineral system, stacking those layers up to produce a heat map. Now this is really no different to you know, AI or <coughs> machine learning type uh, activities that are done today. In addition to that, I went through each individual identified copper prospect on the Stuart shelf or in that search space as you can see and, and applied the same um, mineral system criteria and then ranked it all uh, to produce a list of what we thought were the top, well in this case 21 listed there, uh, occurrences of copper that had a probability of discovery. And uh, in this here, uh, you can see the Cadney prospect or Caddy prospect sitting down here at uh, number uh, 18, I think it was, and there's a lot of other names on that list that you'll be familiar with. In terms of its location, we're about 50 to 60 kilometres to the east of Cooper Pedy. Um, geologically, we're sitting just to the north edge of the Karari shear zone, so that's a large crustal, crustal scale shear zone or suture that wraps from the western Gawler Craton all across and runs across the top of um, the Mount Woods in Lyre. And, and this uh, Ugalima intrusive complex is just on the northern side. <clears throat> in terms of the evaluation of historic uh, information that existed there, um, there was drilling in the 90s, uh, early 90s by BHP, and then was some follow-up in the 2000s with Goldstream. But you can see from the list here, there's some really strongly elevated occurrences of rare earth elements. Um, there's also a strong elevated occurrences of copper mineralisation as well as moly. So there's a really good breadth of historic information there. Uh, it, I'll talk about our implication of a carbonatite model moving forward into the presentation, but it really does validate that this project has got genuine discovery upside. You know, we've got major crustal structures running through the area, we've got magmatism, We've got multiple targets of scale that have been identified and really importantly for myself is that we're sitting under thin cover. We've only got about 70 metres of cover so that's uh, quite different to a number of the other uh, areas and prospects on the Stewart shelf. Sorry about that. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> there were three pivotal things that occurred over the past three years of really investigating this project and that really came about by a really detailed interrogation of previous exploration envelopes. <coughs> um, <coughs> we, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> we've been on a process of digitising an enormous amount of data that's in, in the PDFs from the previous company reports which aren't in SARIG. One of the things that was pivotal, um, <coughs> we located a, a couple of pages which identified a local grid uh, in, in the PDF reports and there were seven drill holes on that local grid which weren't in SARIG. So I had to do a, a fair bit of in, investigative and, and um, work to get that map rectified based on a bit of evidence from other drill holes that were on the map. So that was really pivotal. There was two and a half thousand plus drill hole samples of geochemistry that are in those envelopes that aren't in SARIG. And there's also a number of gravity surveys that were done through the area, including a fairly detailed survey over the prospect itself and 
that data isn't in SARAG either. So there's a number of pieces of evidence on this project that aren't, isn't available uh, if you're just trawling through available data sets. And what it became apparent is that from the drilling that was done, if you look at it in a conventional IOCG target, they've actually missed the gravity anomaly. So irrespective of what mineral system model that you apply, there is genuine upside there for more drilling. Um, I've taken the drill holes uh, from that um, rectified image and produced a cross section. And you can see this hole here, 9202, was, was probably the most um, anomalous hole with mineralisation. We've also got this hole here, 16 metres at 0.57. Uh, the bottom four metres were over a percent and it ended in mineralisation. So we feel that there's quite a bit of upside considering that this drilling here is really off to the edge of the gravity target and, and potentially there's, there's plenty of opportunity to test more in there. As I delved a bit deeper, then, then my inquisition really started. There was an old petrology report buried in the envelope, uh, a couple of highlights there underlined, you know, unusual lithological types, potash and or soda metasomatism, phenotization, and then another comment there about overwhelming evidence for a carbonatitic origin. So that really sparked my interest. I didn't really know much about carbonatites until I, until I started looking at this project. They also took five samples from their drilling and analysed them for the full suite of rare earth elements. Unfortunately, the analytical lab report was illegible and there wasn't any other records of, of that data in the report. But unusually, <coughs> and it's not very common, they actually produced a spider diagram in the report. So if you allow me to indulge in a bit of creative licence, I took that spider diagram and grabbed some results from the literature of Bay and Ovo and plotted those results from CADI against uh, in this instance here, I've just superimposed the envelope of, of the most mineralised part of Bay and Obo over here on the samples from Caddy, and you can see that we've got samples which are obviously highly elevated in the light rare earths, but encouraging for myself was quite elevated in the heavy rare earths relative to some of these other, or this other prospect that's uh, quite well known. Now, I've got three slides that talk about, I suppose, the, the characteristics of a carbonatite mineral system. I'm not going to dwell into it for the, in, in the uh, interest of time, but these slides are here for people to peruse at their will. Um, I'm, I'm sure, the, sure the presentations will be made available. I do just draw your um, attention to the reference here, which I grabbed most of this information from. So the origin of carbonatites, their tectonic setting, alteration that's associated with them, uh, their morphology and geometry, uh, which in particular is here about radial dikes, ring dikes, cone sheets. I'll talk a little bit about that later in the talk when it comes to the um, geology interpretation I've done. But I thought what was really encouraging from this reference is the very bottom point, dot point there in terms of the st statistics. You know, carbonatites and alkaline carbonatite complexes have a 9 in 100 probability of hosting a mine. So I think that's a fabulous uh, asset to be exploring for this type of mineral system. And of course, they're intimate link with rare earth elements, critical minerals. Again, I won't talk too much to this slide, but there's some references there about Bay and Obo, Mount Weld, Palabora, um, some of those references there from Mike Porter and his work. There's also a reference there to a talk on YouTube given by Carl Spandler about rare earths. And uh, <clears throat> I think on this pie chart, it's important to see, you know, global rare earth resources, carbonatites, tailings, mostly from carbonatites. Uh, laterite soil clays, largely from carbonatites, and then of course Olympic Dam. So that's quite compelling. <coughs> the work that we've done, fortunately there was one of those drill holes that was preserved in the core library in small vials. I went through there, sieved the chips out, put them into chip trays and we've had high logger done on those chip trays. The, no the data's a little bit noisy just due to the lack of sample in the tray, so there's some reflection from the plastic. but. Uh, on that uh, uh, hyperspectral um, plot there, we can see that we've got uh, white micas, quartz and K feldspar and pledge uh, on the peripheries. And then in the central part of the, of the hole, we've got a lot of pyroxene with some occurrences of apatite. In addition to that, uh, I took some samples and we resubmitted um, samples to the lab to get the full suite of rare earth element analysis done on those samples because the, the previous explorers had only really analysed for lanthanum and cerium generally. So uh, again I've got the caddy, uh, sorry I've got the bay and oboe envelope there in green with some other samples in the blue dots sitting down here. 
Uh, I've taken the mineralised envelope of samples from Olympic Dam that are above 0.3% copper from Cathy's paper there in, in yellowy orange, and you can see that all the mineralised samples above 0.2% uh, total rare earths for uh, Caddy uh, here in red. So we, we're sitting in the realm with some other really impressive mineral systems. Now just to touch on the solar geology interpretation, this is largely based on an interp of the magnetic and gravity data and then derivatives of those potential field data sets. Um, we've got a fairly prominent um, magnetic circular feature which is what's long been characterised to define that Oogalema intrusive complex. Um, we've sort of got possibly three uh, alkaline intrusive complexes sitting within that. And it's really this one here that appears to be um, the most interesting. Um, I'll just slip to the next slide. This is really my last slide. So we've got a number of targets to find. We've <clears throat> probably the most important ones and the most compelling ones are all these radiating high intensity magnetic dike like features that. Uh, uh, ooh, 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 let me just go back, sorry. Oh, wrong button. Yeah, all these high intensity magnetic features here which appear to be radiating out from this central sort of intrusive plug or something if you like, that's an interpretation. Uh, so we believe these are sort of magnetite, carbonatite, rare earth element targets. There's, there's 40 or 50 of them through here in about a 40 square kilometre area so there's lots of those to be targeting in the future. There's possibly some standalone just intrusive plugs or breccia pipes that we also um, view as targets, and there was another standalone gravity anomaly further north in the project on an interpreted structure that could represent a more conventional IOC type target. So our next steps on this project now that we've got a really fundamental solid mineral system model for this project is to undertake our land access. I've started that negotiation a couple of weeks ago. Past that we'll be looking to collect some high resolution geophysical data sets, probably mainly relying on magnetics because the gravity data is not too bad, but we'll look at that and see if we can improve. Um, then we'll be moving the project towards uh, identifying which one of those magnetic anomalies is really fit for drilling and then uh, getting out there into the near future, medium to longer term and testing the theory. Um, so that's all I've got for you. If anyone wants to know more ab about the project, please um, feel free to send me an email. Um, uh, we're not a listed company, obviously, we're private, so yeah, reach out to myself and I'm happy to provide this presentation and all of the data sets that we've put together on it and uh, you can look through it, so thanks very much.